ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا by the grace of Allah azza wa jal it gives me the pleasure to once again meet with our brothers and the community at Masjid Huda in Sheffield UK United Kingdom to remind one another of an important topic and read something from the book of Allah and the sunnah of our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it relates to this topic of the means of strengthening one's iman and indeed the affair of iman is very important in the life of the muslim and it is something that each and every muslim must give priority to throughout their lives as a believer until death as allah azza wa jalla says in the quran wa abudu rabbaka hatta ta'tiya hatta ya'tiya kal yaqeen worship your lord until certainty comes to you so the believer is an individual male female is an individual who is in a constant state of the worship of allah azza wa jalla and turning to allah and doing that which is pleasing to allah and seeking to the pleasure of allah azza wa jalla and likewise abstaining from that which is displeasing to allah azza wa jalla and that which would bring about his anger and a part of that is an individual being cautious and careful and concerned about the affair of their iman you have a hadith of abdullah bin amr bin as radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma which is reported in the al-mustadrak of imam al-hakim that he said the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in al-imana لا يخلق في جوف أحدكم كما يخلق الثوب فاسأل الله أن يجدد الإيمان في قلوبكم. And the hadith has been declared authentic by Sheikh Al Bani رحمة الله عليه. Where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that faith, iman, is tested and becomes worn inside. of an individual like the wearing of a thobe the fact that the, the thobe when it is constantly worn and washed and worn and washed becomes worn out so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the faith of an individual it goes through the same trial and test فاسأل الله أن يجدد الإيمان في قلوبكم. So ask Allah عز وجل to replenish or revive the faith in your hearts. Ask Allah to revive the faith, the faith in your hearts. So this authentic hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم gives a clear indication to the believer that our faith. goes through trials and tribulations it goes through its points of weakness it goes through its points of strength and it's something which is witnessed by every believer the believer at times finds himself very high in iman finds it very easy to worship allah azza wa jalla be obedient turn to allah and likewise he finds at times that his iman is being tested and he finds himself weaker so it should be at a great uh, great focal point of the believer to 
focus on increasing that Iman and strengthening that Iman. Increasing it and strengthening it. You also have the narration of the Sahabi Abu Durda radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which is reported in the Ibana by Imam Ibn Batta, that he said, من فقه العبد أن يعلم أمزداد هو أو منتقص He said, from the fiqh, from the understanding, the knowledge, the wisdom of the individual is for him to know, is he increasing or is he getting weaker? It's from his fiqh. It's from his, from his fiqh to know, is he increasing or getting weaker? Is his iman getting stronger or is his iman getting weaker? So for Arbu Darda radiallahu to describe that from being from wisdom and understanding of the servant is a clear indication that it's important, that it's something that is constantly monitored by the believer. It's not something that the believer doesn't give any attention to it's not something that the believer is, is negligent of, but rather the believer gives it great focus. He gives it great focus. And it's something which is important in his life. And we have that clearly illustrated in the Sunnah of our beloved Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like you have in the Hadith of Anas bin Malik, reported in the Jam of Imam al-Turmidhi, that the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to say, in fact, the narration says that the most supplication that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Ya Muqallib Al-Qulub Thabbit Qalbi Ala Deenik The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Oh the turner of the hearts keep my heart firm upon your religion keep my heart firm upon your religion and the Sahaba as Anas radiallahu Zaran who narrated the Sahaba when they heard that statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they said, Ya Rasulullah, تخافوا علينا وقد آمنا بك. They said, Ya Rasulullah, you fear for us and we've believed in you. Yani, we're okay, we've believed in you. And the Prophet Wasallam clarified that the hearts are between the fingers of Allah. يقلبها كيف يشاء. That the hearts are between the fingers of Allah Azza wa Jal. He turns them any way he wishes. So the Prophet Wasallam and him being a prophet and a messenger and the last of the prophets and a messenger and the best of the prophets and a messenger the Prophet وسلم, used to constantly say it himself and remind his companions to say it the Prophet وسلم, used to say it constantly say it himself so much so in this narration it's mentioned that it can it was from the supplication that he would say the most Oh, the turn of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. So that's the Prophet ﷺ teaching his ummah this dua. And likewise, the Prophet ﷺ teaching his ummah the importance of monitoring one's iman. The importance of monitoring one's iman. Likewise, you had the hadith in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Allahumma ati nafsa taqwaha وَزَكِّيهَا أَنْتَ خَيْرٌ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا أَنْتَ وَلِيُّهَا وَمَوْلَاهَا You have the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ used to say, O oh Allah, give my soul its taqwa and purify it. You are, the best to purif you are the best to purify it. You are its protector and you are the owner. So, similar to the hadith in Anas, the hadith of Anas bin Malik, you had this hadith that the Prophet ﷺ is asking Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma ati nafsa taqwaha. Oh Allah, give my soul taqwa and purify it. You're the best to purify it. And you are the protector and the owner. So once again, the Prophet ﷺ, being the Prophet and the Messenger and the best of the Prophets and the best of the Messengers, and the Prophet ﷺ is pleading to his Lord to give him taqwa and to purify his, his soul, to purify his, his nafs, to purify his nafs. 
Similarly, you have the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala Abdullah bin Mas'ud, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa-tuqa wal-athaf wal-ghina. The beginning of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Oh Allah, I ask you for guidance and taqwa. I ask you for guidance and taqwa. So here we find clear examples from our beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam giving focus to the issue of Iman. Because here we find guidance and taqwa, and those things are from Iman. Those things are from Iman. And he asking Allah Azawajal for guidance, asking Allah Azawajal for taqwa, asking Allah to purify you. Asking Allah Azawajal in the hadith of Anas, asking Allah to keep your heart firm on his religion, all of those things are from Iman. So we find our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself saying it, and in that we find the Prophet Sallallahu teaching us to say it. And not to say it occasionally. Not to say it occasionally. No, these were things that, these were supplications that the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum described, described that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would constantly say it. Would constantly, would regularly say it. Not occasionally or from time to time. So if this was the case with our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as Aisha Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha said, when she questioned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about him standing in prayer at night until his feet would bleed. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, Ya Rasulullah, why do you do this? وَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ Ya Rasulullah, why do you do this? And Allah has forgiven all of your sins. That which is in the past and that which is to come. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah has forgiven him everything. But he constantly supplicated to his Lord Azawajal as it relates to things to protect and increase his Iman. Things to protect and increase his Iman. So we have in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the best example. The best example. And the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum, those who were with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this was very clear to them. Because of that you have Mathalan, the statement of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala which is reported in the Shu'ab al-Iman by Imam al-Bayhaqi and likewise the book of Sharia by Imam al-Ajurri that Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said ijlisu he said to his companions ijlisu bina nizdadu imanan he said sit with us let's increase in iman sit with us let's increase in iman and in another, the first, that statement was uh, reported in the Shu'ab al-Iman by Imam al-Bayhaqi. The second statement is reported in the Sharia by Imam al-Ajurri, also on Abdullah bin Mas'ud. He said, Allahumma zidni imanan wa yaqeenan wa fiqhan. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala, he said, O oh Allah, increase me in iman and certainty and fiqh. Increase me in iman and certainty and fiqh. So, and many other statements of the Sahaba where they would supplicate to Allah Azawajal, asking Allah to increase them in Iman, increase them in certainty, increase them in fiqh, increase them in, in knowledge. So the affair of an individual, or the topic of the lecture of an individual strengthening, strengthening one's Iman was something, as we illustrated, important in the life of our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it was something that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum constantly, constantly focused on. And that's why you have the hadith of Hatib where, the famous hadith where he uh, met Abu Bakr and he was in a state of distress. And Abu Bakr questioned him, what's wrong? He said, I feel that I'm a munafiq. I feel that I'm a munafiq. And Abu Bakr said, why? He said, because when we're with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find ourselves as if Jinnah and Hellfire is in front of us because of the, the mo'idah, the, 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 ad, the admonition or the, the lecture that we've heard from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But then when we go with our families, we find ourselves in a different state. We don't find ourselves on that spiritual high. So Abu Bakr said, if, that's, if, if that has made you a munafiq, I'm a munafiq as well. I feel the same thing that you, I witnessed the same thing that you witnessed. So they went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
And the Prophet ﷺ explained to them, no, no. There's a time for this and a time for this. There's a time that you're, you will be on a very, very, uh, you'll be on a spiritual high, and at times you would be amongst your family. So you won't have that same high. But, and then the Prophet ﷺ said, and if you were to constantly remain on that spiritual high, then the angels would meet you on the roads. The angels would meet you on, on the roads. So of course in that hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is not encouraging them to sin and the likes of that. But there's a time where your iman will be very high, and there's a time that it would be stable once you're amongst your family members. Once you're amongst your family members. So that's not something to worry about. But what is to worry about is when the believer's iman becomes weak or their heart becomes dead. That's something which is very uh, dangerous for, for, for the believer. So we would like to discuss a few things to help one another uh, strengthen our iman. May Allah Azawajal strengthen our iman and make us firm upon his deen. From the affairs, and much can, see, can be said about this, but we will just mention a few points as it relates to the strengthening of one's iman. From the affair that a Muslim can, can and should implement to strengthen uh, his iman is the dua of Allah, is dua to Allah Azawajal. Is dua to Allah Azawajal. As we have in the hadith, the first hadith that we mentioned, the hadith of Abdullah bin Amr bin As radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, the hadith that was in the mustadrak of Imam Hakim, and it's also in Al Mu'jam Al Kabir by Imam uh, Al Tabrani. In that hadith that we mentioned, where the Prophet mentioned that the Iman becomes worn in you like the wearing of a thobe. Then what did the Prophet say in that hadith? فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّدَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ In that hadith, the Prophet said, So ask Allah to revive the Iman in your hearts. So that hadith is a clear indication that dua is one of the greatest things that a believer can do to strengthen their Iman. So that hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is encouraging us to do it and ordering us to do it. Fas'alullaha, fas'alun, fad'ullaha. So ask Allah. And you jaddid al iman fi kulubikum. So ask Allah to, to revive the iman in your hearts. So here the Prophet ﷺ is instructing us to do it. And in the hadith of Anas, and the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, the, other, the same narration that we spoke about a few minutes ago, we notice that the Prophet ﷺ himself was doing it. Where the Prophet ﷺ said, Allahumma ati nafsa taqwaha wa zakiha anta khayru man zakkaha. The hadith in Sahih Muslim. So the Prophet was doing it ﷺ. Allahumma ati nafsa taqwaha. Oh Allah, give my soul its taqwa. And purify it. You're the best to purify it. You are its protector. And in another hadith, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afaf wa al ghina Oh Allah, I ask you for guidance and taqwa to the end of the hadith, chastity and being self-sufficient. So we find that the Prophet ﷺ is asking Allah Azza wa Jal. So from the greatest uh, remedies for the strengthening of one's iman is to supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal, to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to strengthen your iman. And that's what, because, because of that you find throughout the Qur'an Allah Azawajal encourages the believers to supplicate to him. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ عُدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call on me and I will answer you. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاءِ إِذَا دَعَانِ And when my servants ask about me, I am close. I answer the call of the caller. I answer the call of the caller. أَمَّا مَنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفِ السُّوءُ Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, who is the one who answers the caller and removes the harm? Who is the one who answers the caller and removes the harm? So, I'll be loved, so I'll, I'll, our Lord Taala, in numerous places in the Quran reminds the believer and encourages the believer and orders the believer وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ عُدْعُونِي 
orders the believer, your Lord said, call on me. Estajib lakum, I will answer you. So from the greatest uh, components and factors of strengthening one's iman is to supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal. And what also uh, uh, clarifies that, Mathalan, you have one of the greatest books, and it's one of the books that we'll be reading from uh, shortly, Bayth in Allah one of the greatest books of uh, uh, the issue of sins and iman and the affair of the heart, we know. Disease, the disease and the cure by Imam Ibn Qayyim, Rahim Allah Ta'ala. The disease and the cure by Imam Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi Rahim Allah Ta'ala. One of the greatest books ever written on the affairs of the heart and the ill effects of, of sins. Imam Ibn Qayyim, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, in the beginning of that book, and we many of us know that, or we should know because, like I said, it's one of the, the best and, and most important books writ written on the ill effects of sins. As we know, someone approached Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah Ta'ala and asked him about uh, sin and advice for an individual who finds it difficult to abandon a sin. And from the beginning of the book, in responding to that individual, one of the first things that Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah Ta'ala mentioned was dua. The first things that Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the book was dua. He says, وَالدُّعَاءُ مِنْ أَنْفَعِ الْأَدْوِيَةِ وَهُوَ عَدُوُّ الْبَلَى يُدَافِعُهُ وَيُعَالِجُهُ وَيَمْنَعُ نُزُولَهُ وَيَرْفَعُهُ أَوْ يُخَفِّفَهُ إِذَا نَزَلْ وَهُوَ الصَّلَاهُ الْمُؤْمِنِ Imam, and the book is, is translated into English, for, it's recently been translated into English for those who um, do not have it, and I advise everyone, every Muslim household should have this book. It's been translated recently by our brothers at Al Hikmah Publications in Philadelphia, USA. Jazakumullahu khairan. Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah Ta'ala says, and supplication is from the most beneficial cures, remedies. It's from the most beneficial remedies. It responds to the calamity. It's like protection against the calamity. It protects you. It cures. And here the calamity would be what? The illness would be what? The illness would be weak iman. So it is from the most beneficial remedies for weak iman. Dua. It will prevent it. It will cure it, weak iman, it would prevent it even from happening, or if it happens, it would remove, it would lift it. So let's say if a person, it, it's happened, a person has fallen into a state of low iman, so it's happened. So now the person makes dua and it lifts that illness. It's, it's, it's an illness. It's a spiritual illness. Or you or it weakens it. So they don't find, weakens what? Weakens the illness. So the illness is not strong. And he says, and it is the weapon of the believer. He says, it is the weapon. He describes it as being a weapon. It is the weapon of the believer. So one of the greatest things that a believer can do is to supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal. And I'm going to continue, but going back to the, 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 the introduction, and that is, for an individual to understand the importance of guarding one's iman. To understand the importance of guarding one's iman. I'm going to continue to talk about that, but I want the listener to constantly refer back to that. If you understand that it's important to guard your iman, to monitor your iman, to focus on your iman, then you will make dua for the strengthening of your iman. Then you will make dua and the other things that we're going to mention in Allah Ta'ala. But if the believer gives no focus, if he's heedless and reckless about his iman, then he won't he won't supplicate for anything. Because it's not something important to him. It's not something that he holds as a priority. And Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah Ta'ala mentions in Igatat al-Lahfan, another of his famous books, 
He mentioned that it's possible that a person continues like that, being heedless of their iman, until they get to the point where their heart is dead. Because they didn't monitor it. So it's important. And once again, notice the statement of the Sahaba, that the dua that the Prophet ﷺ used to say the most was, Oh, the turn of the hearts. So we find our Prophet ﷺ being in a constant state of dua, a constant state of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, a constant state of doing things to replenish, strengthen his iman, fortify his iman. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another thing, say it's point number two, which an individual should do to strengthen his iman is al ijtihad fi tark al ma'asi. Is that the individual should be vigorous in abandoning sin. In abandoning sin. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aminu stajeebu lillahi wa lirrasooli idha adha'akum lima yuhyeekum. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aminu stajeebu lillahi wa lirrasooli idha adha'akum lima yuhyeekum. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, O oh, you who believe, answer Allah and His Messenger if they call you to that which gives you life. So in this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal is ordering the believers to respond to Allah, to be obedient to Allah. And obedience to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is abandoning sin. It's a part of abandoning sin. And what does Allah Azza wa Jal say at the end of, at the verse? إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ When they call you to that which brings you life. Is it physical life? No, it's not physical life. Even the kuffar have physical life. Spiritual life. It's the life of iman. It's the life of your heart, which is the true. The true life. The life of your heart. It's the life of your heart. The spiritual iman. The true iman. So Allah Azza wa Jalla in this verse is ordering the believers to answer Allah. Obey Allah. Obey his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is that which brings you life. This is that which replenishes your iman, increases your iman. Imam al-Bukhari, uh, Imam Hafid ibn Kathir, rahmatullah alayhi, he mentioned that Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned about this verse. He says, لِمَا يُسْلِهِكُمْ And he answered Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they call you to that which brings you life, meaning... To that which is for your benefit. To that which is for your benefit. And it was mentioned by Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala in his book of Tafsir that he said about this verse Ya'muru ta'ala ibadahu al mu'mineen bima yaqtadihi al iman minhum. That in this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal. It was ordering the believers for that which is a condition for their iman, that which should be the fruit of their iman. What is, what is that which would be the fruit of their iman? Obedience to Allah and His Messenger. He said, وَهُوَ الْإِسْتِجَابَةُ لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولُ صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الانقياد لما أمر به وَالْمُبَادَرَةُ إِلَى ذَلَكِ He said, Obedience to Allah and His Messenger, submitting to that which they've ordered, and racing to do so, وَالْدَعْوَةُ إِلَيْهِ And calling to it, وَالْإِجْتِنَابُ لِمَا نَهَيَا عَنْهُ وَالْإِنْكِفَافُ عَنْهُ وَالنَّهِ عَنْهُ Now this is what he says. So, it's that the individual submits to the order of Allah and His Messenger. And they race to do so. And they call to it. They call others to it. And they abstain from that which is forbidden. And they stop it. And they abandon it. They abstain from it. They stop it. They abandon it. 
So the, the believer should understand that from the things which increases an individual's iman and strengthens their iman is obedience to Allah Azawajal. Is obedience to Allah Azawajal. Obedience to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Shaykh Rahmatullah goes on to mention because the next part of the verse, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَهُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ Know that Allah will come between, Allah can come between the individual and his heart. The individual and his heart. What is, what's meant by that? The Shaykh says, حَذَّرَ عَنْ عَدْمِ الْإِسْتِجَابَةِ لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ Allah is warning. Allah is warning individuals from not responding to Allah. Yani not being obedient to Allah, not being obedient to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Faqal, and this is what the Shaykh is saying. He's he's um explaining what is intended by this verse. He says, Faqal and Taruddu Amrullahi awala mayatikum. فَيُحَالُ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُ إِذَا أَرَدْتُمُوهُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكُ وَتَخْتَلِفْ قُلُوبُكُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ يُقَلِّبُ الْقُلُوبَ حَيْثُ شَاءَ وَيَصْرِفُهَا أَنَّ شَاءَ He said this verse means it's like Allah say, it's like Allah as we're just saying yani what's meant is Allah is warning the believers from opposing the order of Allah when it comes to them. And by doing so, a barrier be becomes between them and their Lord. So in the future, when the individual wants to try to do it or the likes, then their hearts would change. It's possible that their hearts change. And Allah Azawajal causes their heart to become like it's black. It's covered, as Allah says in another part of the Quran. Bel rana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. Allah says in another part of the Quran, their hearts have been become covered because of that which they used to do. Because of that which they used to do. So the Shaykh Rahmatullah says, so it's like a barrier is placed on their hearts. Like a barrier is placed on their hearts. Their hearts are turned. Another place in the Quran, وَنُقَلِّبُوا أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبْصَارُهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ Another place in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, and we turn their, their sight and their hearts, and they become as if they were never believers. Why? Because they disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jalla. They didn't abandon sin. They didn't follow the orders when they did so. And they were believers. They had submitted but when they constantly, constantly disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal, then it's, their hearts changed. Their hearts became covered. SubhanAllah, you find individuals, you find individuals that were once believers with us in the masjid, in the durus, in the universities, studying, possibly sitting with scholars. And now you hear about those individuals or you see those individuals and it's like SubhanAllah, as if they never believed, as if they never were practicing. What happened? What happened? Even Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah mentions in some of his books, it's possible that that individual was doing something in private and, and the people didn't know about. So Allah brought it out in public. Allah Azawajal brought it out in public. Naam. So, the second issue, like I mentioned, is al ijtihad fi fi tark al maasi that the individual has to be diligent in abandoning sin. And in that regard, the affair of diligence in ab abandoning sin, because the reality is, my dear brothers, it's, it's it's everywhere, especially for those who reside in the West. Everywhere you turn, there is sin. Everywhere you turn, there is sin. Disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether it's the, the music, whether it's the, the inap inappropriately dressed people, whether it's the riba, whether it's the alcohol, whether it's the parties, any sin everywhere. So the individual has to have ijtihad wal mujahada.
والمصابره she has to be assiduous she has to be diligent she has to be patient upon obedience to Allah azza wa jal and the individual should understand that when you do so Allah azza wa jal will assist you as Allah azza wa jal says law alim Allah fihim khayran lahtadahum if Allah knew if Allah if there was good in them, Allah would guide them. If there was good in them, Allah would guide them. Allah knows what's inside the individual. Allah knows the struggle of the individual. The individual who is sincere and tries. So in that regard, Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَحْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Allah says in the Quran, And those who struggle in our cause, we will guide them to our path. Those who struggle in our cause, we will guide them to our path. So when the believer, this is a promise from Allah Azza wa It is a struggle. Staying away from sin, abandoning sin, it is a struggle. But when the believer does so, Allah Azza wa would support him. Allah will strengthen him. Allah Azza wa would support the individual. Allah will strengthen the individual. So it is a struggle. And we know that the dunya, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, is حُفَّتْ بِالشَّحْوَاتِ That the dunya is surrounded by, by desires. That the dunya is surrounded by, by desires. And jinnah حُفَّتْ بِالْمَكَارِحِ And jinnah is surrounded by difficulties. And jinnah is surrounded by, by difficulties. But this is the life that we live in. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, does the person think that he's going to be left without any type of test? Without being ordered, without being forbidden? Imam Al-Tabir Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentions in his tafsir by way of many sahaba, Ibn Abbas and others, who said, does the individual think that Allah is going to leave him without ordering him, forbidding him, preventing him? Does he think he's just left to live like that? As he wishes, with, with complete freedom. Does the individual think that he's just going to be left? No, that's not the, that's not the, that's not the case. That's not the affair. It requires an individual to, to fight, to struggle. And what's ajib is that when we find from amongst ourselves when an individual wants something related to the dunya that's uh, expensive, that's precious, we find the individual taking every means and measures to obtain it. When an individual wants a degree, they want to get a PhD, they want to get a master's, they want to get a bachelor's, whatever they, they're doing, everything they can. They're making sure their life is going in a certain direction. If they want to buy a house or go on a vacation or buy a car, they, uh, they budget their money. They make sure that they don't overspend. They're very specific and cautious when they want something that they hold to be valuable. When they want something that they hold to be precious and valuable, they are very cautious about how they plan, how they live their lives, what they do, what they don't do, what they compromise, what they don't compromise. But when it comes, and they're very patient with it, year after year after year, they have a goal, they have aspirations, things they want to accomplish. But when it comes to Allah, جل, obedience to Allah, the jinnah, the everlasting pleasure, we find that we're haphazard. We find that we're careless. We find that we don't give the same energy. Did we forget that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said like in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala which is reported in the jam of Imam al-Tirmidhi and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala where he says man khafa adlaja wa man adlaja balagha al-manzil ala sil'at Allahi ghaliyah 
ala inna sil'at Allahi al-jannah. The hadith with the Prophet said, whoever fears, he will move swiftly. And whoever fears this dunya, the affairs of this dunya, the punishment, whoever is cautious and fearful, he will move swiftly. He will do what he needs to do to protect himself. He will do what he needs to do to protect himself. وَمَنْ أَدْلَجَ بَلَغَ الْمَنْزِلِ And whoever moves swiftly, he's going to reach home. And you look at the parable that the Prophet said, he's saying it to us in a way that we can understand. Whoever fears something, something chasing him behind, something trying to harm him, something trying to steal from him, whatever. مَنْ خَافَ أَدْلَجَ He's going to run swiftly. He's going to move swiftly. He's not going to take his time. He's not going to drag his feet. He's not going to rest. مَنْ خَافَ أَدْلَجَ وَمَنْ أَدْلَجَ بَلَغَ الْمَنْزِلِ And whoever moves swiftly, he's going to reach home. Then the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ غَالِيَةً Indeed, what Allah is offering is precious. أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ الْجَنَّةً Indeed, what Allah is offering is Jannah. Look at, that. Look at that statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Listen to that statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He started off with a parable so that we can relate to. Whoever fears something, he moves quickly. He runs. He's swift. And whoever is swift, he's going to reach his home. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Indeed, what Allah is offering, the sil'ah, that which is being sold, or that which is being offered, it's, it's precious. It's ghaliyah. It's precious. And that which Allah is offering is Jannah. So if you want it, you're going to work for it. If you want it, you're going to strive for it. You're going to be assiduous, you're going to be diligent, you're going to plan, you're going to set goals, you're going to make sure you monitor yourself. If you truly want it. Now, another thing which would help the believer, and let's say it's the third thing, which would help the believer as it relates to strengthening one's iman. And we cannot stress it enough. All of these points, we cannot stress it enough, stress them enough. But from the greatest remedies for weak iman and that which increases and strengthens a person's iman is uh, reading and reflecting upon the Qur'an. Is reading and reflecting upon the Qur'an. As Allah Azza wa mentioned in the Qur'an, in Surah Yunus, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِدَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي صُدُورٌ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ, لل... وهدى ورحمة لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ قُلْ بِفَضِلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَهُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Allah Azzawajal mentions, O oh mankind, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِدَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ O oh mankind, it has come to you an admonition from your Lord and a cure for that which is in the chest. Hmm, low iman. Wahudan and guidance. Warahma, mercy for the believers. So Allah is describing the Quran as an admonition, as a cure for the diseases, physical, psychological, spiritual, diseases of the chest, guidance, a mercy. Another place in the Quran, Allah Taala says, "Kul huwa lilladina amanu hudun wa shifa." Say it is. Say it is for the believers, guidance and a cure. Likewise, in Surah Al-Anfal, "Inna ma al-mu'minun al-ladina amanu, inna ma al-mu'minun idha dukir Allah wa jalat kulubhum, wa idha tuliyat alayhim zadathum imanan wa ala Rabbihim yatawakkalun." The beginning of Surah Al-Anfal, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Indeed, the believers are those that if Allah is mentioned, their hearts." soften and when his verses are recited they are in, they increase in iman they increase in iman and they put their trust in Allah Azza wa so the way of the believer the Quran has a major impact on the life of the believer has a major impact on the life of the believer and I'm not talking about just reading the Quran on a Friday Surah Al-Kahf no I'm talking about reflecting over the Qur'an. Understanding, first and foremost, understanding the Qur'an. 
and a constant reminder to those who have been Muslim 10, 15, 20 years and still don't understand the Qur'an, don't understand the language of the Qur'an. I mean, how can a person allow themselves to go f for so long without knowing the speech of their Lord, Ta'ala, what is mentioned in the Qur'an? And I understand that a person can read a transliteration. I totally understand that. Translation, I want translation of the Qur'an. But I mean, what I'm referring to is an individual listening, hearing the Qur'an in the daily prayers or while he's in his home listening to the Qur'an and understanding from the language of the Qur'an because there is no comparison between reading the Qur'an in a translation and reading the, the Arabic. Reading the Arabic, reading the Qur'an. That's the Qur'an, the Arabic. It's no comparison. It has a major, major impact to understand the, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. To understand the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. As we know, مثلا, in Surah Al-Jinn, where Allah Azza wa Jal says, قُلْ أُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّ سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا يَحْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَنْ نُشْرِكْ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا In Surah Al-Jinn, the beginning of Surah Al-Jinn, Allah Azzawajal informs His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that a group of jinn heard the Qur'an and they said, إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا In another part of the Qur'an, Allah mentioned that they went back to their, their, their other jinn and they said, we've heard a, a book that was revealed after Musa. So here in Surah Al-Jinn, they said, we've heard an amazing book. It guides to guidance. So we believe in it. And we will no longer commit partners, set up partners with our Lord. So here, the jinn, the jinn heard the Qur'an, understood the Qur'an, and were affected by the Qur'an. They heard it, they understood it, they were affected by it. Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, in his explanation of this surah, he said, it's amazing how jinn hear it, understand it, and are affected by it. And I'm paraphrasing it, I'm not reading it uh, directly. He said, it's amazing how the jinn read the, heard the Qur'an, understood it, believed in it, and you have some humans that turn away from it. You have some humans that turn, and no, we understand that the Qur'an was revealed to the jinn and ints. But subhanAllah, they heard it and they, they believed in it. And you had Jubayr bin Mut'an, one of the companions, before, before he became Muslim, he heard the Prophet ﷺ reciting the Qur'an. أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُقِينُونَ He heard the Prophet ﷺ, he was, a, he was a mushrik. He was a polytheist. And he heard the Prophet ﷺ reciting from the Qur'an when Allah Azawajal says, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُقِينُونَ Were they created from nothing or did they create themselves? Did they create the heavens and the earth? They don't have any intellect. He said, كَادَ قَلْبِ يطير. He said, my heart almost flew out. My heart almost flew when I heard that. And he was a disbeliever. But he was from Quraysh and they understood the language of the Qur'an. And they understood the language of the Qur'an. So he became a Muslim. Jubayr bin Mut'am radiallahu ta'ala. But he said, notice this, his statement, he said, my heart almost flew. When he thought, yes. When Allah said, were they created from nothing? Or did they create themselves? Did they create the heaven and the earth? They don't reflect. He said, my heart almost flew. Because they understood the Qur'an. So the way of the believer... And that's what we've been taught by our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to reflect upon the Qur'an. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, do they not reflect over the Qur'an or do their hearts have locks? Are their hearts shackled? Are their hearts shackled? كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلَيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Allah Ta'ala says, a book that we have sent down to you so that its verses are reflected upon and so that the people of understanding can reflect. And many of us, we wonder why. Why, why is our iman low? Why is our iman low? The Salaf used to say, if you want to know your position with Allah, look at, the, look at your position with the Qur'an. 
if it has a place, a status in your life. Not just the book you put on the shelf. Not just a book you tell your children to read, you and your, your wife and your children to read on Yom al -Jubah. No. It should be a part of your life, a part of your daily life to read the Qur'an. To read the Qur'an. Remember the hadith, uh, the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud also, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iqra Ali, read to me. And Abdullah bin Masood said, Ya Rasulullah, Iqra alayk wa alayk unzil. I'll read to you and it was revealed to you. The Prophet sallallahu said, Inni uhibbu an asma'ahu min ghayri. I love to hear it from other than me. So Abdullah bin, Mas Mas bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala began to recite Surah An-Nisa until he came to the verse, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَأُولَئِ شَهِيدًا How will it be when we bring every nation as a witness and we will bring you over every nation as a witness? And the Prophet ﷺ said, حَسْبُكْ And Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, فَالْتَفَأْتُ إِلَيْهِ فَإِذَا عَيْنَاهُ تَذْرُفَانِ Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala, he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, stop, that's enough. When he read the verse, how will it be when we bring every nation as a witness and we bring you over all of them as a nation? As a witness, Afwan. We bring you over all of those nations as a witness. The Prophet ﷺ said, that's enough. Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, I looked at the Prophet and his eyes were filled with tears. His eyes were flowing, tears were flowing from his eyes. Why? Is it just because Abdullah bin Mas'ud sounded beautiful when he was reciting the Qur'an? No. It's because the Prophet ﷺ is reflecting over Allah Azawajal bringing all of the nations and bringing him as a witness over every nation of his mas'uliyah, of his responsibility, of the great status that Allah Azawajal has given his Prophet ﷺ. Wasallam, it caused tears to flow from his eyes. So the believer, when we hear the Quran, when we hear the Quran, we should be it. It should cause something within our lives. It should cause something. For some of us, we don't read it, we don't reflect upon it, we don't understand it, we haven't taken, we haven't made it a priority in our lives. So, hence, there's no effect. There's no effect, and then we wonder. Why we have a low state of Iman. Also from the affairs which uh, can benefit an individual as it relates to strengthening one's Iman. Is to, called muhasabat al-nafs, to bring yourself to account. To monitor yourself, to bring yourself to account, to reflect. Where am I? Anyway, th people think about it. Their financial status. They think about their financial status, their credit, credit history or their credit report. They think about, they measure and they gauge other things. Where am I with my degree? Where am I in my career? Where am I? But they don't measure it. But how many of us measure ourselves? And may Allah which I'll rectify all of our affairs. I speak of myself first. How many of us measure ourselves and bring ourselves to account as it relates to uh, our iman and the affair of our heart? Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "Ya ya ayha al-ladina amanu taqullah wa tanzur wa tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadin wa taqullah in Allah khabirun bima ta'malun wa la taqunu kaladina nasu Allah fa ansahum anfusahum ulaika hum al-fasikun." Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, and let every soul look at that which it put forward for tomorrow and fear Allah." So Allah is encouraging us to. Think about our affair. To look, look at what we're doing. Look at what we're putting forward for tomorrow. And then Allah says, and don't be like those who get, were given the book before you. فَطَالَ عَلَيْهُمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ كُلُوبُ In a different verse. وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ نعم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسكم I got it mixed in another verse Allah mentioned 
Don't be like those who forgot Allah, so Allah made them forget themselves. Afwan, I got it mixed up in another verse. Allah says, don't be like those who forgot Allah, so Allah made them forget themselves. أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Indeed, they are the wrongdoers. They are the sinners. So the way of the believer is that you constantly bring yourself, you think about what you're putting forward. You think about your affair with Allah Azza wa You think about your affair with Allah because you know, you believe in that. You believe in resurrection. You believe in the punishment and the bliss of the grave. You believe in Jannah. So why aren't you? Where's your preparation for it? Where's your preparation for it? In this verse, Allah is encouraging us. And in other verses of the Quran, Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned about muhasabat al-nafs and ighathat al-ahfan. He says, وَالْمَقْصُورُ He said, ذِكْرُ عِلَاجْ مَرَدِ الْقَلْبِ بِاسْتِلَاءِ النَّفْسِ وَالْأَمَارَ عَلَيْهِ وَلَهُ عِلَاجَانِ مَحَاسَبَتُهَا وَمُخَالَفَتُهَا وَحَلَاكَ الْقَلْبِ مِنْ إِحْمَالِ مِنْ إِحْمَالِ مَحَاسَبَتَهَا وَمِنْ مُوَافَقَتِهَا وَاتِّبَعُ هَوَاهَا He says, Mentioning the remedy for the disease of the heart. Listen to what he says. The remedy, the remedy for the disease of the heart and it being overcome by its desires. It has two remedies. وَلَهُ ilajan. It has two remedies. مَحَاسَبَتُهَا وَمُخَالَفَتُهَا One is to bring it to account. Bring the soul. The person bringing themselves to account. وَمُخَالَفَتُهَا And going against what your soul desires. So you bring it to account. You monitor it. You question yourself. I'm going to mention some statements. Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahmatullah mentioned some of those statements. And you go against what it desires. وَحَلَاكَ الْقَلْبِ مِنْ إِحْمَالْ مَحَاسَبَتِهَا وَمِنْ مُوَافَقَتِهَا وَاتِّبَعُ هَوَاهَا And he says, And the destruction of the heart is when a person neglects to monitor it and when a person agrees with it and allows it to do whatever it wants. The destruction of your heart will be because you do not because you do not bring yourself to account and you submit to whatever you desire. That will be your destruction. He brings many statements of the Salaf and from amongst them Imam Hassan al-Basri and Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala in Ighathat al-Ahfan. He brings a statement from Imam Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah alayhi. He says, La talqi al-mu'min illa yuhasib nafsahu he says that Imam Hassan al-Basri said you do not find a true believer except that he brings himself to account. Except that he brings himself to account. He says, the person says to himself, what do, you, what do you want to do? What do you really want to do? What do you want to eat? What do you want to, do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? A person Danny, it's with such detail. Then notice what he says. والفاجر يمدي قدما قدما لا يحاسب نفسه أو قدما قدما لا يحاسب نفسه. And the sinner, the wrongdoer, is a person that goes on and on and never questions himself. The sinner, the wrongdoer, is a person that goes on and on and never brings himself to account. He never questions himself. Sheikh Saad al Fawzan, Habib Allah Ta'ala, because he has an explanation of this book, he said, when we when he read this point, Hafiz Allah Taala, he says, "Adam muhasabat al nafs dalilun ala Adam al iman aw ala daaf al aw ala daaf fi al iman." He said, "A person not questioning themselves, not bringing themselves to account, is indicative of the lack of faith or the weakness of their faith." It's an indication that they lack faith totally or their faith is very weak or their faith is extremely weak. So that's one of the things that a person should do and they should do it often. 
and they should do it often, that they question themselves and they bring themselves to account. And they think about their affair with Allah Azawajal and their status with Allah Azawajal because they know. As Allah Taala says, إِنَّكَ كَادِهٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْهًا فَمُلَاقِي Indeed, individual, in, uh, Muslim, you are going to meet your Lord. You are going toward your Lord and you're going فَمُلَاقِي and you're going to meet Him. And you're going to meet Him. So the believer reflects upon that, prepares for it, takes notice of his actions, his statements, his intentions. That which is hidden, that which is apparent. He knows, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Nothing is hidden from Allah in the heavens nor in the earth. The statement of Luqman, يَا بُنَيَّ إِنَّهَا إِن تَكُمْ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْضَ فَتَكُنْ فِي سَخْرَةٍ أَوْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَأْتِي بِهَا الله. Oh my son, it can be the size of a mustard seed. It can be in a, in a boulder. It can be in the heavens. It can be in the earth. It's going to be brought forth. It's going to be brought forth. The Mujrimun will say, مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَذْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا The Mujrimun would say, what is with this book? يوم القيامة It does not leave anything out, whether major or minor. And Allah will say, they will find exactly what they did in front of them. And your Lord has not oppressed anyone. So a person brings himself to account, he reflects, he monitors. And this is something which will increase an individual's iman. Likewise, from that which increases an individual's iman is busying himself with that which is of benefit. Is busying himself with that which is of benefit. Whether it's worship, or whether it's spending time with his family, or whether it's permissible things, traveling, going to nice places that are permissible and the likes, an individual. As Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَنْسَى نَسِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسَنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Allah said, don't forget that your portion of the dunya, you're living in this dunya, but be good as Allah has been good to you. But be good as Allah has been good to you. So from that is that an individual, he works, he takes care of his family, he does that which, like Ali bin Abi Talib says, I hate to see someone not not increasing in the dunya nor increasing in deen. So the way of believer, he's doing that which is of benefit. And then now, during a time of, of lockdown, especially because of COVID, in many parts of the world, uh, Muslims are experiencing something they've never experienced before. But are they taking advantage of their time? Are they doing something to benefit them in this life and the next life? As we say, رَبَّنَا آتَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا wa وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَكِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Oh Allah, Give us good in this life and good in the next life and save us from the hellfire. So the believers, we want good in this life and we want good in the next life. But you have some people, as the Prophet ﷺ said, نِعْمَتَانْ مَقْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ Two blessings that many people are heedless of. Good health and free time. So you have some Muslims that before COVID they were saying, I would do this and I would do that and I would read and I would study. And now they have time. And Allah has blessed them with good health. But they're wasting time on Netflix, playing video games, Call of Duty, this, that. A year has gone by. Some people haven't memorized one page of the Quran. So Allah Azawajal has tested you. You always say, when I have time, when I have time, when I, have, I wish I had time, I wish I had time. And Allah gave you time, more time than you imagined. Allah Azawajal gave us more time than we imagined. And some people sleeping all day playing video games, Call of Duty, Xbox, Nintendo, Sony, this, that, watching movies. SubhanAllah. Haven't increased any. Before COVID and after COVID, you still are the same person. Your level of knowledge is still the same. In fact, it has decreased. Although your time at home and free time has increased. So Allah Azawajal has tested you with your statement. Allah Azawajal has tested us with our statements, may Allah Azawajal rectify our affairs. Now, another thing which can be mentioned, and I'll make it the last thing, because it's late here in Saudi Arabia, but one of the very important things is the importance of having good companions. 
one of the things that would help an individual strengthen his iman is having good companions. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in Surah Al-Zukhruf, that individuals on the day of judgment they will be enemies to one another except friends, friends, al-akhillah, friends, friends that individuals that were friends in this life. Yomaidin ba'adhum li ba'd adu. Friends in this life will be enemies in the next life except the people of piety. Except the people of piety. The scholars mention this as one of the one of the verses as it relates to the importance of having good, good companions. Individuals that remind you of Allah. Individuals that when you're around them or you think of them or you speak to them, you find yourself wanting to worship Allah even more. Wanting to pray. Wanting to read. Individuals that encourage you. Not individuals that call you to sin. Individuals that pull you down. Subhanallah, Allah Azza mentions also in Surah Al-Furqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَمْ أَتَّقِذْ فُلَانٍ خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَّلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدْ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ خَذُولًا As Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the day that the oppressor would bite on his hands, and say, I wish, woe to me, I wish that I had followed the messenger. Woe to me, I wish I did not take this individual as my companion. He has uh, caused me to deviate after guidance came to me. And indeed, the shaitan is a deceiver. Indeed, the shaitan is a deceiver. So the individual, having good companions, we know the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-mar'u ala dini khalilihi. The Prophet said the person is upon the religion of his companion. So the way of the believer is to have good companions. And the most important companion is your spouse. The most important companion is your spouse. And these days while there's COVID and the likes of that, you're, you're with your wife. Be a good companion. Encourage. Be patient. Teach. Help. Support. If you're able to leave the home, go out of the home and go to nice places, comfortable places. You know, allow your family to relax. To if, if, if it's good weather and the likes, take your children for, for, for activities, halal activities. Don't keep them bottled up inside the house. They need to run around at times. Be a good companion, the Prophet said, خيركم 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 The best of you is the best of his family. And I'm the best of my family. Our beloved Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are a few things that I encourage myself and my brothers and sisters to take advantage of and to give priority. Especially if Allah Azza wa has given you good health and time. Take advantage of it. Give it priority. Monitor your iman. Focus on your iman. Do things that increase your iman. SubhanAllah, like I mentioned, when you find individuals, when they, when they want something that's precious and something that they hold to be dear, and it's a, they make it a priority. They set goals. They set indicators. They, set, they, they monitor it. They, they, they strategic plans. They do all of this when they hold something to be important. But where is our strategic plans as it relates to memorizing the Quran, as it relates to teaching our children, as it relates to getting closer to Allah, as it relates to fasting, as it relates to giving charity, as it relates to supporting the sick, as it relates to uh, reading beneficial books. Why is it now that we find ourselves on lockdown and having more time than we've never had before and we find we're not increasing in anything? This is a clear indication of uh, weakness in a person's faith. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to strengthen our faith. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal with his names, his names and his attributes to increase us in Iman and to allow it to increase and increase and to protect us from the evils of this life and the next, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect our family and to guide our families and to strengthen our bond and our unity upon good and to allow us to live upon that and to die upon that. Allah knows best wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim in kathira. The brothers ask if they could ask some questions, but unfortunately it's very late. It's almost midnight here in Saudi Arabia, so I have to apologize. 
maybe in the near future we could arrange another lecture bi idhnillahi ta'ala Allah knows best sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh